Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and today I thought I would show you how I make a junk journal. If you're not familiar with the concept of a junk journal, all that is is a collection of bits and pieces of scrap. It could be scrapbook paper that you have left over from a project. It could be printed papers you've done with a, a jelly plate press or whatever. Um, junk mail. You can use up your junk mail this way as well. And you just collect it. And when you get enough of it, you can go ahead and make a junk journal. And this is what my junk journal looks like. And it is just made up of bits and pieces of scrap paper. Um, and you can see some of them are not even full sheets as well. And uh, this is a piece out of an atlas. Um, whatever I've got laying around. And you just fold them, put a cover on them. And this is a great place to put odd pictures that you have uh, laying around that you didn't use in say a uh, scrapbooking layout or whatever or when you want to use up bits and pieces uh, that are left over from your stash in other projects like um, ephemera uh, things like that um, whatever even magazine pictures cut out and whatnot this page isn't finished uh, you can experiment with background techniques and what I like about a junk journal is that you really don't think about what you're doing. You just slap it in. So you glue it down with whatever you've got handy, uh, glue, uh, gel mat medium, whatever. In fact, in one case, I uh, actually, this page, I didn't use any glue. It's just stapled. I just stapled them with one of those uh, Tim Holtz tiny staplers. Um, or tiny attacher, I guess they call them. So you can see in here, there's other bits and pieces that haven't been done. I decorated the cover again with just some uh, bits and pieces left over, tied a little piece of ribbon to it, and I stitched this one. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, but you don't have to stitch it. If you've got a long reach stapler, you can do that as well. And this is the size I ended up with. But again, the size is up to you. It can be bigger, it can be smaller, it can have as many or as few pages as you want in it. So. I've gathered together the pieces of uh, paper, just scrap, that I'm going to use for this. And I've got some other essential tools here as well. Now, again, use whatever you have laying around the house. I used to bind books, so I've got lots of uh, binding cord. Uh, this is waxed, and uh, this is not. And I'm going to talk about wax cords when we get there. Um, so that's what all these, I have them in a variety of colors. Um, you don't need this much, okay? I just happened to pull these out of my stash to show you that they do come in different colors. You're going to need what is called an awl. An awl, an awl is just a, a paper piercer. So if you don't have an awl, don't worry. Some people have things that look like this, paper piercer. Um, a push pin will work as well. All we're going to be using this for is to punch some holes into the spine so we can bind our pages together. Um, you may want a lump of candle wax or beeswax. This is actual book binding uh, wax and that's meant for waxing your thread and I'll show you that in a while and why we use that. And you're going to want a needle, okay, a tapestry needle, a large needle, you know, uh, with or without a point, it doesn't really matter. This is what you're going to use to get the cord through your spine so that you can um, Find your book. And a bone folder is nice to have, but if you don't have a bone folder, an old credit card will do, the back of your scissors, your thumbnail, whatever. It's just to make nice creases in when you fold the paper. And that's essentially it for making the basic journal. After you have it all together, well, it's up to you what you do with it, how you decorate the pages, what you put into it. Um, I gesso the pages as well before I start laying things down. It just finds that it gives some of the maybe some of the papers that are a little bit um, thinner, uh, a little bit more substance to them. But it's really up to you what you want to do. That's why it's called the junk journal. Anything goes. Um, now, I'm going to clean some of this stuff off my desk and I'm going to talk about the various papers that I've selected from my stash. Now what I did was I've just been collecting junk mail and if I get some junk mail that is fairly stiff like uh, this from Montana's that's kind of a cardboardy uh, type 
paper, so that's okay. And don't worry that it's shiny, and don't worry about what's written on it, because you're going to cover this up uh, later, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you'll notice these are different sizes, too, uh, and that's okay. I like this one because it's got this little cutout uh, piece. Looks kind of interesting. This is a real estate newsletter. Yep, that's junk. Um, and then I've got some various papers that I've had laying around. I haven't done anything with some scrap scrapbook paper and some jelly uh, printed papers as well that have been laying around again I'm not that concerned about sizes as you'll see we'll work with whatever size we have now the one thing you want to do when you first go through this and figure out which papers you're going to use I don't have that many pulled up here um, the ones that I've pulled up are probably going to make a booklet that probably has 10 double pages in it about that approximately and that's okay but again you can make it as big as you want it I did pick one piece of scrap uh, scrapbook paper that I want to use as my cover so you may want to look through your stash that you've pulled up and think about what your cover is going to be so once you have your pile of papers all assembled all you're going to do is fold them now I'm going to start with the cover page because this is going to be my uh, guide for this actual size of my journal. So I'm just folding it in half and this was an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. I have folded in half and this is going to be the cover for my uh, journal. I'm just going to set that aside for a moment and this I don't need to do any folding with it because it's already folded but I do have a little jagged edge here so I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut this little jaggedy piece off. And that will do for that. Now, the next thing I have here, I have a piece like this. This one's already folded. Uh, I folded this in at the beginning, so I'll just put that in my pile. I'm just going to put the pages I'm going to use in one pile and put the cover in the other. This is already folded, so I'll just put that there. That's already folded. This one's already folded. See, half the job is done for you already. Uh, this is a piece of jelly print paper. Now, one beauty of the jelly print papers is you've already got a background already done. And this one actually has a little texture paste on it. So this is where the bone folder comes in handy for stiffer papers. Um, here's another one. Just give that a fold in half. Now, of course, these jelly print papers, you notice, are only decorated on one side. And I may not even choose to use the decoration that's on here. I may gesso over top of that or put some more paint or I'll put more uh, elements on that. It really doesn't matter. All we're concerned about right now is just getting our pages folded so we can work with them. Okay, these are going to be all my pages. Now, what about size? Well, some of them are bigger than my cover that's not a problem okay so let's just sort these out which ones are bigger that one is not I think this one will be fine same with this and that one I think will be okay as well that one's okay it's smaller that one's okay that one's okay that one will do. I think the only one I've got really is this one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this over to my paper cutter and I'm going to cut this down so that it measures um, what's half of eight and a half. Or sorry, eleven. It'll be five and a half across by uh, by eight and a half this way. Okay, so I'm just going to take that over to my paper cutter. I'll be right back. So I'm just cutting this down. five and a half and then eight and a half okay so now that should work now what you're going to do is you're going to be stacking these inside your cover but you may find as you stack these just let me put a few in that they hang out a little bit because as it gets thicker 
you see there's a little bit of an edge here of where those papers are hanging out if you don't you can leave that it doesn't matter it's a junk journal and the more pages you put in here the thicker this is going to get and so it is going to they're going to hang out a little bit more so let's put all our pages in so I can just show you this now this one's a little booklet actually already in itself so I'm just going to open it up it's a little coupon booklet actually from McDonald's I'm just going to open it up to the center of the booklet and lay it in there so when this is oops popped out <laughs> see that's why I'm showing you this okay let's get everything in here okay when I bind this you're going to notice I'm going to have all this overlap now is that really a problem well to me it's not really a problem because it's a junk journal I think it adds character to it however if this bothers you there's a couple of things you can do one you can t take each of these pages once you have them folded over put them into your paper cutter and cut off about half an inch or whatever amount you want so it doesn't hang over the edge the other thing you could do is you could actually tear the edges as well and that would give a really interesting deco edge to the page whatever you'd like to do it's up to you so I think what I'm going to do for this journal is I think I might uh, I think I'm just going to trim them down a little bit and I'm going to go in about a half an inch I think so I'm going to take these over to my paper trimmer I'm going to trim them down and then I'll be back for the next step okay so now I trim down the pages uh, that were a little longer than my cover and now you can see with them folded in there they don't hang over the edge again that is strictly up to you you might like that look um you might want to tear the edges totally up to you what you do with this okay so now that I've got the pages together in the order I want I want to sew the binding together now to do this you might want to draw up a template and there's no right or wrong way for doing this but here you see I have a whole template I call it oops upside down okay and I hope you can see this but I'm actually going to do five holes on this particular journal because it's fairly thick and I want to make it uh, strong, the binding. On the journal that I showed you at the beginning of the video, this one, I only have three holes. And it was fairly thick too, so it worked. But I think I'm going to use um, five holes here. I'm also using five holes because I have some shorter pieces in here and I want to make sure that the shorter pieces um, are well secured with more than just one uh, little hole so I've marked my holes and I just eyeballed these I did not uh, measure them out I went about an inch in from the top and an inch in from the bottom I placed one approximately in the center of the spine and then I just divided that space from the top hole to the middle hole in half roughly again just eyeballing it and the same here so I have five holes one two three four five and here I've noted this is where I'll be knotting it because I'm going to put the knot on the inside of the book um, I could put the knot on the outside if I leave extra uh, thread on the outside it's it's something I can use as a decorative element I could add some beads to it some charms whatever again it's up to you but for the sake of this particular junk journal I'm just going to do a very simple knot on the inside I've also marked over here uh, the direction of my thread the way I want to go so I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to go down through the hole and I'm going to go up to the first hole and come up then I'm going to go down through the second hole and I'm going to go bring it all the way down from the bottom and I'm going to come up through the hole here at the bottom and then I'm going to go down into this fourth hole and I'm going to bring it back up to the third and that's going to give me two tails that I can knot together and that should secure everything fine so I've drawn a template for this and this is where you want to get out your awl or your push pins or whatever you're using to punch the holes 
and take your first set of pages. It might happen to be the ones that are short. Now they don't have to be in the center. They could be anywhere in your book, but I'm going to place these in the center. And I'm just going to take the template and you might want a pad for this. So I'm going to get out a pad and I have to find a pad. So just give me a second. I'll be right back. I forgot to get out my punching pad. Okay, so I've got out my punching pad and it's just a piece of foam. That's all just so I've got something uh, that I can put my holes through. And I've got this particular set of pages here and I'm just lining up the template and I'm, I'm just eyeballing this so that I'm going to get three holes in this to secure it. And then I just use my awl or my push pens and I punch my holes into it. And okay, I made a mistake. Didn't line it up very well, did I? I cut it in the wrong spot. No problem, it's a junk journal. I will do this again. It might help if I fold it on the crease first. Now we should be okay. And that's much better. So I've got my holes here. So I'm going to take my other pages. And I can do, since these ones are all about the same size, I'm just going to take a bunch of them. Make sure they're lined up. And the template is just a piece of 8.5 by 11 printer paper, copy paper. Okay, those ones are done. Let's take a few more here. Now, if you get something like this, where the pages are not are a bit irregular, just take them, line them up where you want it. In fact, instead of doing two, I'll just do this one first to make it a little easier. And when you have it lined up, same thing, just punch it through. So you see, there's really, this is very easy, very fast to do. And you're not worried about how even everything is because you're kind of eyeballing it just as long as the holes are in, you know, a place where they're not going to rip through. See, I can probably do these two pages together. Oops, out of alignment. And the last one is my cover, and I need holes in it as well. Might have moved that a little bit. You could use binder clips to uh, hold your pages together if you're afraid you're going to move around a lot. But I find that that's really not necessary. It's close enough. Yep, that's going to work fine. Okay. So once you have all your holes punched, you're going to want to choose your binding thread. Now, I showed you all of these before. Let me get them into the shot. And uh, there's all kinds of things you can use. I would suggest you don't use a uh, sewing thread unless it's a something like a nylon or polyester that's really really strong and you want something that's a little bit thicker than sewing thread because um, there's going to be a lot of use of this so you don't want your binding to snap or break or the uh, you know the thread to break so what have I got here I've got something called waxed cotton jewelry cord 
and you can buy this any place any bead shop any michaels that kind of thing uh it's this stuff can be a bit on the pricey side um when you get one it's a variety pack but you can buy single rolls too and that's what these are um this is hemp that's biodegradable it says yeah hemp 100 percent natural hemp cord so again that's uh easy enough to acquire um this is actually meant for book binding this is special book binding cord it's not that expensive you can often buy this in like a curry's if you're in canada uh you can probably get it at uh, michael's or joann's too um and the same with this kind of stuff so it's really up to you color wise and it comes some of it will come waxed this one says it's waxed this one is not waxed this one is waxed these are also waxed and you can tell because you can feel the wax on them if you run your finger over it you can actually peel some of the wax off why what's the difference it really doesn't matter whether you buy pre-waxed or unwaxed cord um, the only difference is that it makes it easier if it's waxed to pull it through your holes you can get around that by getting a little piece of beeswax or even just grab an old candle and this will work and you take your cord and you pull it through let me show you um, I'm gonna pick my color here uh, I think I'll use the purple because or the lavender because it's got kind of a lavender in that it doesn't really matter it's a junk journal so what you do is you pull out the length you want now how do you figure out how much you want you should set your book in front of you and go like this one two three four and then add a little bit more so approximately four times the length of your spine uh, for cord that should give you plenty to work with because the worst thing well the worst thing that can happen is that you run out you can just tie a knot and add some more to it it's not a problem but that's a bit of a, a pain in the butt so how do we wax it if it's not waxed now again this is a step that's you know I like doing this because it makes things a little easier but it's not that difficult to use an unwaxed product okay but I'm going to show you this so you take your candle wax your beeswax whatever you've got and you just hold it down onto this and pull your cord through it I'll do that again you do it a couple of times so I'm just putting my thumb on it here and I'm just pulling it down on the edge it'll eat into the wax a little bit and that's okay you want that because what it's now doing is it's coating your thread with wax we'll do it one more time just for good luck I'm just going to go this way on here okay and that's all there is to it now comes the binding part now let's get out our template again just as our guide again there's no right or wrong reason for this it's whatever you like I've got my book sitting here I'm going to open it up to where all the holes are and I'm going to grab my needle again I suggest a large needle uh, about the size like a you know tapestry needle kind of a thing uh, it doesn't have to be that sharp because you've already punched the holes in and if you're like me I have a tendency to um, stab myself so you're just going to thread your needle part I always have trouble with and I'm having trouble with it right now I'm just going to cut off a little piece off the end of this to give it a little bit of an angle I said I was going to cut off a little piece of this and give it an angle there we go. we've done it now and now thread it you know it would help if I wasn't so bloody blind okay this is going to take me a minute and also you want to make sure you have a needle with a big enough eye hole in it for the size of your thread I'm going to pull out a generous amount and I'm going to go through according to my template the center hole number three so I'm going to find the center hole in my first set and I'm just going to sort of spear them 
the pages all on to that center hole. Hope I'm in the shot. And the cover page. Okay. Now, I'm just going to pull that, some of that thread through. Just kind of line these up. And this is why you want it, the thread, it makes it nice when you have the thread waxed, because pulling it through is much easier. Now, I'm going to leave a tail, because I want enough tail that I can tie a knot um, later. Okay, so next thing, according to my diagram, I want to go up through the first hole. So I'm going to find that first hole on my cover. And I can move the pages around so I can see what I'm doing. And again, I'm just going to spear, spear, I guess spear works the pages through. Now I'm not worried about tension at the moment, obviously. I'm just interested in getting all my pages skewered onto my needle. Now, I bet you I just did Zanotti. I did. I lost my end here. So, I'll wait a minute. I'll thread that through in a few seconds. So, be careful of that, that you don't lose the one in the center. Okay, and sometimes you can line up the holes in a group. Get them all speared at the same time. Okay. Now, I got to put this one back on. This might be tricky. So let's see if I can do it by hand. The other thing I can do is I can take my awl and just make that hole a little more obvious. There we go. And there we go. Oops. Almost had it. Darn eyes. Okay. I've got that through. Now I can... Now... This one, though, remember, I only put three holes in here instead of five, so I do not have a top hole here to go through. So what am I going to do? Well, the next thing I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to go down through the second hole. This would be the second hole. So no worries. I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to go down through the second hole. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to, you're going to see my thread. That's okay. Now, if you now let's let's talk about what are we going to do with this tail? If we're worried about losing it again, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little piece of tape and I'm just going to tape that right down there. Now I'm not going to lose it. Okay, should have done that in the first place, but I didn't. All right, so we're going to go down through the second hole, and now you can see probably as you bend the pages up the holes where they are and it's a little easier. Just gonna pull that through. Okay, where's the hole? There it is. He says it's easier to see. Okay, and there's some more. And it's this hole and the cover. Now, do make sure you've gone through everything. 
and now we're going to pull it through. Now, be somewhat gentle with this. Again, the wax thread makes this much easier. And now we're going to give it a little bit of tension. Now, instead of just pulling it straight through, you can do that. Pull it from the sides as well a little bit to make sure you've got the tension. If it still seems loose, that's too loose. Okay, so you're just going to pull it up a little bit. The reason you're giving it tension now is because it gets more difficult the more stitches you have to tighten it up. Now you see, I just put that one that way. So you got to fiddle with it a little bit. Okay, now you will be doing a final adjustment to this as well. All right, so now we're going to go down to, that was hole two. Um, now we're going to go up through hole five at the very base. And I'm just going to turn this around so I can see it a little better. Find that hole. And then I find if you look down the top of it, which is awkward in a camera to show you this, you can see your holes a little better. And just take your time. It's not a race. Okay, I'm all through those ones. Okay, now I've got the same thing happening here. I don't have a fifth hole on this. So I'm going to go down through hole number four, through this piece and all the other pieces. And again, whatever way it takes that you can see this, that's the way to do it. Whatever works for you. And I'm sorry if I'm getting my head in the way. Okay. Now, before we come up through the last hole, this is where we want to adjust our tension. So, you just play with the cords until you get everything nice and snug. There, I think I'm pretty good. So now we're going to go down through the center hole. And again, now this one's a little bit trickier. You have to kind of do it by feel, but it should if you've got the tension there, you shouldn't have too much of a problem finding the hole it's going to go through. And again, you're going to give this, make sure your tension is good. Well, I think that's pretty good. And now I can take my needle off. And we'll take the tape off. And if you rip your paper, it doesn't matter. It's a junk journal. You're going to be covering that up. And now you're going to give it, tie it in a knot. And I like to go around twice like this. Pull my knot through and give it another one. One advantage of wax thread as well is that it clings better. Your knots don't slip. Let's just check that tension one last time. That's looking pretty good. And just for good luck, I'm going to tie one more knot. Now, you can decide how long you want the tails on this. And there we have it. Now, one thing that I like to do sometimes with the knot, depending on um, how secure I think that is, is I may put a little 
dab of glue on the knot itself and let that dry and then that secures it even more so. So here we go. Now final stage of this is I like to take my bone folder and just give it a good rub and here's what the binding looks like. It's double threads here and here and you could as I said you could do it so your knot comes through here and you have some tails that you can put some beads on or some charms or whatever you want. But there we go. Our junk journal is now done. And how many pages do we get in this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not counting it right, but you know what I mean. I count both sides. This is a fairly substantial book. And now you can gesso, paint, do whatever you want, and your junk journal is finished. Decorate the cover, and you've got it. So, that's all there is to it. Um, I hope my instructions were clear. And as I said, there are many ways to make a junk journal. This is just one way. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.